podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. So welcome back to episode 126. And what we, we've we snuck this one in because I think it's it's quite a good title. And we might end up doing two podcasts on this, a part one and a part two, or a part three as well. We don't yeah, know. We're yeah. just going to go with it and see what happens. But the topic is important psychotherapy books, a review. Yes. Now, I probably uh, was more, I don't know if I was more insistent on these podcasts. On my own website, uh, bobcook.org, and on the Manchester Institute of Psychotherapy, there's over 100 reviews of psychotherapy books, because I collect psychotherapy books like no one else in the world, I think. I agree. Um, I thought, how can we sort of do all these podcasts which, without reviewing? at least some of the important psychotherapy books. And then I thought, well, if we go down this road, the next 40 podcasts are going to be on these types because I'll go through them. So we we're just picking out the sum, if you like, of what I and Jackie think are important books, not necessarily from transaction analysis. Um, in fact, the two or three we're going to be discussing here, um, one of them, which is one of my favourite books, um, staring to the sun is by Irvin Yalom. In fact, we could start with that, as I've mentioned it. Start with that one, yeah. Yeah, so I this book... not read it, so I, no. I'm completely at your mercy with this one, Bob. Yeah, but we can talk about the themes of the book. Yeah, yeah you, absolutely. You, you'll have lots of thoughts, I think. Yeah. So this book is... I know off air you said, Jackie, that on Audible is seven hours. Yeah. Well, actually, I only think it's about 100 pages, so I was surprised to hear you say that because I've been listening to Harry Potter books recently. Yeah. Lots of the Stone and Order of the Phoenix and goodness knows what. They're very long books, and they're more like 21 hours. So um, if anybody likes books, especially Harry Potter, read them. They're great, much better than the films. But let's get back to this. So a very important psychotherapy book, which I think psychotherapists per se, counsellors per se, should think about reading, is a book which came out about 20-odd years ago by a very famous psychoanalyst, psychotherapist. He calls himself, he calls himself actually an existentialist psychotherapist. So even though he has a psychoanalyst, psychoanalytical background and a psychotherapy background, he calls himself calls himself an existentialist. Um, he's very, very popular, uh, very well known throughout the world, and especially in the United Kingdom. And his name is Irvin Yalom. Y-A-L-O-M. He's 93 now, and he still wow. sees clients. That's amazing. Yeah, and in he's written many, many books. Um, his first book, was called Love's Executioner about 40 years ago. And what he takes is vignettes from many of his clients' works. And so he, he's somebody who wrote up notes after treatment, successful treatment of clients. Now, I always wish I had, by the way. I never really did. One of my supervisees I've been seeing for 15 years or so, he writes notes up every session and he's 62 so he's seen many many clients and he's got records and records and records and Irvin Yellum did the same thing basically so these vignettes and tales are from the narratives of his clients so his first book, which I think must be 30 years ago, which is called Love Executioner, is a series of 10 or 11 of his clients, um, which he talks about um, in a very skillful narrative way and very accessible 
for counselors and psychotherapists or people who are interested in the world of psychotherapy and change to read. Yeah. Okay. So he's written about 11 or 12 of these different types of books, all on the same, where he writes narrative tales and metaphors around the clients he's worked with. This book, I think, is about the fifth or sixth in. Wow. And it's got a theme to it. Staring into the sun really means staring into oblivion. He doesn't he call it staring. <laughs> <laughs> He's not he doesn't call it staring into oblivion. So that's, oh. that's my that's my thinking about yeah. you know what he means by the title. And it, it, it's a, it, if you think of the word existentialist, it means the core themes of life, yeah, which hit us as a, hit us at an exact existential level. Such the word as, existential frightens me, Bob. Well, it's about existence. Yeah, I think that's why it frightens me. It's, yeah, it's like there's no right core. or wrong. It's just it is. So it's core issues, real core issues like hopelessness. Yeah. You know, like loss. You know, real core issues of existence. Yeah. Like death anxiety. Like, you know, these are core issues around existence, not necessarily about, you know, how we get on in relationships or communication breakdowns. They may lead to core existential issues of hopelessness and loss or death anxiety or whatever it is but when you call yourself an existentialist you're dealing with those core issues and just a few that you've mentioned there about loss and grief and death and all those sort of things they are topics that we will all come across at some point in our life always without a shadow of a doubt <laughs> yeah yeah always and they may trigger off really deep issues around our own mortality our, our own existence on this planet, yeah. our issues around leaving this planet. So these issues can get triggered off in our life cycle. Yeah. And often those um, feelings at an existential level are often always there under the surface, even though we don't think about it. They're there on our conscious level and may get triggered off by significant pivotal points in our own history. Yeah. And I suppose for a lot of them, because they are deep and meaningful questions, we we don't really want to go there. No. No. And what's interesting about this is I've always said this, you know, I've never smoked. But for all smokers, all people who are not smokers. They will know that on cigarette packets, there's a sign which says, you know, these are damaging to your health. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that should be on the front door of every psychotherapist or counselor's office. <laughs> what I am going to say is that often when we come in with certain issues, like communication breakdowns or come in with issues around anxiety, maybe, as the person starts working on those issues, they may be triggered off down layers to different parts of our psyche and psychological history, which we may never thought about for ages. Yeah. I mean, you know that, don't you? You know that yeah, somebody comes in with X, yeah. and they may be really the etiology of what they're talking about was way back in their history. Yeah. And they suddenly say, oh, I don't know how I've started talking about this. Yeah, I don't know where that's come from. Yeah. I don't know where that's come from. And then the therapist says, well, do you want, would you like to explore this a bit more? And suddenly they're exploring their sense of hopelessness yeah. from being a two- or six-year-old or whatever we're talking about. And remembering issues of when they were being defined or bullied and they felt hopeless. We could go on, couldn't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, and if I had a, you know, a pound or even a 10p for every time a person said exactly what you've just said there, how did I get here? I'd be a very rich man. Yeah, absolutely. I think it happens pretty much in every session. I, I have no <laughs> idea where that came from, you know, a client will say. Yeah. Oh, 
Mm. So in, in looking at this book... Um, Staring into the sun. I think it's a lovely title. Yeah, it's about... It's really about... I said staying into oblivion. Uh, what I mean by that is really, you know, centering or reflecting on issues of our own mortality. What happens next when we leave the planet? Um, uh, anxiety, which come up all the time, which can be triggered by, you know, what I've just said, loss or mortality issues. Because in this book, he starts off talking about a central theme, which is from his position that all of us from birth carry echoes of anxiety with regards to leaving this planet, or what he calls death anxiety, which is generally there. And what he might even want to call generalized anxiety, I don't think he does, um, because general anxiety is a DSM term. But he's talking about that sitting beneath a lot of our uh, issues, if you want to put it that way, is this echoes of anxiety to do with living and dying on this planet. And they can get triggered off to a much more intense level through mortality issues. Yeah. So I was reading this book. So this is when I read it uh, about eight or nine years ago. I'd just been into hospital until I... I don't very rarely go into hospital, by the way. But this is about 1964. No, sorry, 19... About eight years ago, sorry. Um, and uh, it was for a rotary cuff injury, which is really... A very, very small operation. Yeah. Um, but I, I was reading the book after it, and I think something was triggered inside me, probably from that operation, and I've been reflecting on my own mortality anyway, which triggered off many vivid dreams and anxiety issues. Later on in my life, we're now going back to about four years when I went into hospital for a very serious um, heart surgery, which was a very different ball game altogether. I had more intense anxieties about existence. So I think these crises in our life yeah. can trigger off anxiety issues which have been there for quite a long time. And Yellow. And that's the theme of Yalom's book. Yeah. It's interesting. I think the first time I thought about my own mortality was when I became a mum. And I can remember I had this real strong fear that if I died, they wouldn't remember me. Mm. It wasn't about dying. That That was the only fear that I had, was that if I died when they were young, they wouldn't remember who I am. Well, it is about death, isn't it? Yeah. About your death and not being on this planet and how people accept yeah. sex. And... But when I think about people having, you know, death anxiety, I I think it that it's about how they're going to die. And I don't think that's the case a lot of the time, is it? Well, I think that's the cognitive... That a cognitive that could be cognitive thinking. If you explored underneath that though, yeah. And so, oh, as a therapist, I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And what feelings do you feel as you think about this, or you know, what's happening in your body as you think about this? I think you might get to different places. Yeah, because it's a really big topic <laughs> oh. none of us know what happens on the other side so that's the thinking isn't it yeah you said and what are you feeling when you are thinking this yeah i get an answer like well i uh, if i really think about this i often get a sense of panic yeah well when i think about this i freeze and find myself 
my body's gone really stiff with fear. Or when I when you talk about what I feel, you know, I feel quite numb. You know, underneath the thinking, yeah, yeah, it's often repressed feelings. Yeah. Now, also, what Yellam does in this book, which I think is really important for therapists and counselors, is a template or a treatment plan of how to work with people who express death anxieties. Interesting. So there's a 10-point plan, or however many points, yeah. on how to work with people who present anxieties around loss or death, um, not from just general presentations. I mean, not many people walk in and say, look, I have anxieties of death. They might do. I could easily have walked into my therapist and said, oh, look, just had this triple heart bypass, and out of that has come panic and fear and death and et cetera. But usually these these anxieties, which have been there since birth, uh, Yalom would argue, may be triggered off by many other life crises. As in you work underneath the surface, you come to these feelings. Yeah. He talks and he presents a chapter on how to work with this. Now, that's, that's that's quite useful for a therapist to have in the toolbox anyway. <laughs> mm. Do you know what I mean? To know how to work with that. And and definitely many life crises. I mean, I was just thinking of, uh, uh, and it was in the paper talking about how um, you know two people's unexpected deaths for various reasons and how the uh, the son. Uh, who found and was coping with this and the anxiety and the panic attacks and the nightmares and the visions. Uh, and here we are, right into loss, hopelessness, lack of control, yeah. unpredictability. Yeah, absolutely. And to have a treatment plan like you, like Yalom talks about, is a useful toolbox, isn't it? It's useful to have in your toolbox. Yeah. Well, the other thing I think like about Yalom is his readings are very accessible. It's not long, confuted psychiatric, psychotherapy, you know, language, if you like. It's like really down-to-earth language. Good. That's my sort of book then. <laughs> And there's quite a lot of metaphors. I know he talks about metaphors and he yeah. talks about clinical vignettes and examples, but they're very accessible. Very, very accessible. Good. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I like it. I have actually downloaded it on Audible, then I'm going to listen to it because it does sound really interesting. Yeah. And the treatment plan's good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a book, Irvin Yalom, Staring into the Sun. I can't remember when it was published. I would imagine 15, 20 years ago, easily. If you bought it on uh, Amazon, it's in paperback, so it's not going to be expensive. Yeah. But he is one of the foremost existentialist psychotherapists in the world. And he's still alive, and he's still seeing clients. And if you want to then take another little book, which I think you'd find interesting as a counsellor and a psychotherapist, or even if you're interested in what happens behind closed doors in the psychotherapy sessions. His first book, which is at least 30 years ago, uh, is uh, Love's Executioner. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think, you know, for me personally, if I find somebody that I can relate to or that I enjoy the way that they're writing, I'm more likely to read more of their books. You know, when you're talking just his name and then saying he's an existential I kind of went into my thinking and think that's going to be way above my in my own intellect. But then when you're saying it's very down to earth and easily very accessible true. and metaphors, I've completely changed. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Existential like a therapy is a long name. Yeah. But it simply means therapists who work with core existential issues of yeah. existence in this world. Yeah. But what's better about this guy, better in the terms of accessibility, is it's written very, very down to earth, normal language in inverted commas. Yeah. 
not like a textbook, for example. No. No, it, it, just from what you've said, you know, I, I downloaded it and I was thinking I'll I'll dip in and out, but I think I might actually enjoy listening to that, yeah. I think I will. I think it's a book I certainly think counselling and psychotherapists uh, it's useful for, and it said it's got a treatment plan on how to work with people who uncover uh, or, you know, cover anxieties and echoes of generalised anxiety to do with mortality issues and their time on this planet, which can often be triggered by just being through a COVID pandemic, for example. Yes, yeah. Climate and change. Yeah. I could go on and on. Yeah. I see quite a lot of clients and, you know, people that have health anxiety that kind of touches into that. Do you know what I mean? But I've not seen anybody really that has you know, anxiety around their own mortality or death, but lots around but health anxiety. Loads of clients, yeah. who I suspect, come with the feeling out of control. Yeah, yeah. Hopeless. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. Loss. All these things. Yeah. Trauma, tra- maybe post-traumatic tra- trauma due to X, X, and X. That's that's why I'm talking about an existence issues. Yeah. yeah. They may not term it death anxiety, yeah. but I think underneath it, Yalom would argue that underneath it from the day we're born, we're dying. Yeah. And, it, and it, if you think about it that way, it's straight, it would be strange if the human condition, there wasn't echoes of anxiety given where we're heading. Yeah. I think that's what separates us from the animal kingdom, isn't it, really, is that we kind of project forward. We're not very good at being in the here and now. We're always looking to the future or in the past. So, yeah, it's it's there in all of us. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's my recommendation for a first book. Okay. A bit deeper meaningful, but Staring into the Sun by Erlen Yalom. Irvin. 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 Yeah, Irvin Yalom, Y A L O M. Okay. Great, great. Second book, which I know you know, I know you know this book inside out. But I, I could not mention it when we're talking about important psychotherapy books because, you know, I don't know any CA psychotherapist that probably hasn't got this book. And, and for people who are TA counsellors, they'll have this book. And I know just what you're going to say. Yay! <laughs> I couldn't do podcasts about book reviews without just mentioning TA Today by Ian Stewart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T, and Van Joins. Yes. First edition was 1989. But there's been many, many editions. I think the last edition was probably about 2016, but there's been a lot of editions on the way. Yes. Often called the Transactional Analyst's Bible. I can see why. I mine's it's it's dog eared and yeah, it's really well used. And I dip in and dip out. I've never read it from cover to cover, but mm. I do dip in and dip out of this on a weekly basis, I would yeah. say. Yeah. So why would people read this? Obviously, TA students would read this because of all it's a book which has got in it all the basic concepts and principles of transactionalized psychotherapy. So that's obviously should be there for a TA student. People who are uh, interested in personality models or psychotherapy in general may be interested in this because Transaction analysis in itself has a very accessible personality model. Yeah. And therefore, it would be interesting for people to read. Yeah. Counselors who perhaps might be trained in another modality might find it interesting in terms of thinking about change and personality models and even techniques from a different way of thinking. And it could add uh to a different dimension uh and how they might um think about working with their clients 
So there's many reasons why I think it's an important book to read. Yeah, yeah. I've actually had I have clients that have bought the book. Mm. You know, mm. when I've been sharing because you know, I we both do do educative psychotherapy, so I share a lot of TA stuff, and they've mm. asked what that book is, and they've they've gone away and got it themselves. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Very good for clients to read. It is primarily a textbook. Yeah. So best to be, unless you're doing essays and things like that, if you're on a TA course, maybe. Um, but it's best to dip in and dip out in, I think. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't read this type of book, 200 pages from beginning to end, just like that. No. It would be... Uh, as I say, dipping. If you're a TA students, often it's a major book the first years would have to buy and bring to weekends, say, on specific subjects. So it's a student book in that sense. Yeah. Um, it certainly isn't a book that you would just read from beginning to end because it's not that way. No. no. But it is it's, a good book. It is jam packed. And I know we've said this. Many times, but there's lots of diagrams in it, and I love a diagram, Bob. <laughs> it's got great diagrams. And one thing I like about this book very much is that after each chapter, it's got exercises yeah. that you can do. Yeah. So whether it be on parent, adult, child model, personality model development, whether it be on contracts, whether it be on games, whether it's going to be on a script, after each chapter, there will be exercises for you to do regarding the chapter you've just read, if you want to. Absolutely. And there's a process to it, I think, as well. You oh. know, the, the chapter before leads on to the one that follows and it kind of builds up as it goes along. So you don't go into it and it's really heavy from the, the first bit. It kind of eases you into TA gently, I think. I Yeah, I, I do like it. And it's called a, an introduction to transactional analysis. Yeah, it's not advanced. No. Yeah. No, and it, and it also has case studies as well yes. as you go along. So it's, I think, an accessible book. It's it's taken over as the major textbook in TA, and as we talk in two thousand and twenty three, even though there are many other TA books, it's still. I think the major book that TA students would have, uh, you'd be hard pushed to probably find a TA therapist that in the United Kingdom particularly that wouldn't have that book on their bookshelf. Yeah. Well, it's on mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I wanted to just sort of bring that in because... It's important anyway for TA people, but I think it's important for other, all, all people who are interested in change and specifically counsellors and therapists who are interested in, in different modalities and ways of thinking, or they might have heard of transaction analysis and think, well, what is that? And this isn't a bad book to read, to just understand some of the introductory ways of thinking uh, by the originator, actually, of transaction analysis who was Eric Byrne, who was a psychiatrist, was a psychotherapist, and he died very unfortunately of a double heart attack in 1960 on Carmel Beach in California. Um, so, you know, TA's got his roots quite a long way back. Yeah. But this is, this is a book that goes through a lot of the concepts he talked about in, a, I think, even a more accessible way than the original books that he wrote. I've I've got a couple of the books that he wrote, and I find them very difficult to read. <laughs> They're very 60-ish in the language, and I need to read the paragraphs over a couple of times before I can take it in, if that makes sense. Yeah. So this is TA Today. Yes. Ian Stewart and Van Jones, first edition, 1989. But if you are going to buy it, off the back of this review, and uh, I hope you do for lots of different reasons, um, by the latest edition, which I think might be about 2016, but I wouldn't swear to that. Yeah. Definitely one for the 
bookshelf. And, you know, it, I know we're, we are both, you know, it's transactional analysis that we do, but this podcast is about lots of different modalities of, you know, it's behind the therapy door. So it's counselling and psychotherapy and lots of different modalities. But I think everybody would get something from that book. Yeah. So we've had two books, one written by an existentialist psychotherapist yeah. and one by Ian Stewart and Van Joyners, two well-known TA therapists. I am, now this isn't because I'm a TA therapist, the third book, but this is one of my... Can we do this in part two, Bob? Oh, we run out of time. Well, it, we, we're kind of half an hour into it now, so shall we... Do okay. Two more books in part. We have three parts then, because I've got to, uh, we've got about eight books to go through. So maybe the next three podcasts we'll take up on books. Okay. Okay. So until next time, Bob, hang fire, and we'll do another one. Do we tell them even? Oh, are we going to surprise them, or shall we tell them what the next two are? You can tell them what the next two are. Because this next book, I think. Is probably my favourite psychotherapy book of all time. And this does not mean uh, that it's your favourite or anybody else is listening. I'm sure you've all got your favourites. Uh, that's fine. But I, this book is my favourite. Mm. It's called Counselling for Toads. It's a classic. It's based on the Wind in the Willow stories which I read as a child. Yeah. So that's what we'll start with. Okie dokie. Until next time, Bob. <laughs> okay. See you soon. See you soon. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.